Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 7, Sequencing Translations. Sequencing. So in math, a sequence is um, a list of things, something that goes in a certain order. So if I told you 1, 2, 3 and left the next one blank, I think a lot of you would say that the next one is four. So that's how you fill in a sequence. Or if I did two, four, six, eight, then the next number is going to be 10. Those are arithmetic sequences. We're not talking about those, but that's what a sequence is. It's an order of events occurring in math. So if we come to number one and look at part A, I've already copied my angle, my vector, and my segment, and it says to translate the angle ABC and segment ED along vector FG. So in order to do that, it means to move it in the direction of FG, the distance F is from G. So I'm going to move to the right until F is at G. So I just moved that from F to G, this direction, this distance. So there is my image, and it says to label them prime. So A was here. So this is A prime. B was here. This is B prime. C was here. Now it's here. So that's C prime. And E was here. Now it is here. E prime. And D was there. Now it is here. That is D prime. So there is number one, A. Now B says, translate the images, A, B, C prime, and ED primes along vector HI and label that a double prime. Okay, so now I've copied A prime, B prime, C prime, and E prime, D prime, and HI vector, and they're asking us to translate the prime down the distance, the direction, and the distance of H prime or HI vector. So I'm going to move H to I, which is right here. And then it says to label those double primes. So A prime is now here. I'm calling it double prime. Here's B double prime. And here is C double prime. And then finally, E double prime is down here. And this is D double prime. So what we have done is we moved this angle here to the right, this distance and direction, to get here. And then down this distance and direction to end up right here. So now C says, what does the size of angle ABC compared to A double prime, B double prime, C double prime? So if I get my protractor out and I move it right to the vector at B or the vertex B, rotate this so I'm right on segment BC. That line's got to be right on our, on our segment, our initial side of our angle. And then I'm going to rotate this around to get to my terminal side of my angle as closely as possible. And that is approximately right there. Off a little bit, it won't go in between. But we're looking at about 128 degrees. So if I move this down to here and put it right on BC at the point B, the, ve the vertex B, and my angle is going to end up to be the same angle measure. It may be off just a tiny little smidgen, and that is just an error in copying, but it is pretty close. So there's the original right on the angle, and then bring this down here to the double prime, and the angle measures are identical. Okay. So how does the size angle ABC compared to the size of angle A prime, B prime, C prime? I would say angle, the measure of angle ABC is congruent to the measure of angle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. Okay? There's our first example. D says, how does the length of segment ED compare to the length of E double prime, D double prime? So now I need to take my ruler and I need to measure, so I'm going to bring this over and we're comparing ED to E double prime, D double prime. So if I measure this and I rotate this up like so, 
I'm right at zero here on E, and it looks like it is 64 millimeters. If I bring this down here and put this right there, we again are at 64 millimeters, so they are the same. So I would say the length, using absolute value symbols, the length of ED is equal to the length of E prime, double prime, D double prime. And that's how we write length. The length of ED equals E double prime, D double prime's length. E says, why do you think what you observed in parts D and E were true? And the reason is angle measures and segment lengths are preserved under translations. Okay. So there it is. Angle measures and segment lengths are preserved under translations. Okay, now let's look at number two. Now it says translate triangle ABC along vertex FG and then translate its image along vector JK. So let me set this up and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've copied the images and it's asking us to translate triangle ABC along vector FG, meaning in this direction, that distance. So I want to move the triangle and the vector up until F gets to G. So I just moved it up three into the right two, if you will, since now that we're on a grid, we can see what we just did. So now the triangle has moved up that far. And then it says translate its image along vector J, K. So now I'm going to move that triangle along. Actually, let me copy it. Okay, so now we're going to translate this image, A prime, B prime, C prime, that I haven't labeled yet. And I'm going to move it from one end of this vertex to the other. So I moved it this direction, this distance. So now I'm going to label this. So C went to here, so that's C prime. B went to here, so this here is B prime. And A went up to here, this is A prime. Then we moved it over at this angle, so now this is A double prime. This is B double prime. And this is C double prime. Okay, so there is the two movements. Now we're going to answer some questions about that. No, well, they didn't ask any questions. It just said to translate it one way and then the other. So we went up and to the right, and then we went up and to the right at a different angle, if you will. And we're going to get into that a little more in the next problem. So here's number three. It says to translate figure A, B, C, D, E, F along vector G, H, then translate along J, I, and label each image appropriately. So you try this, and then we'll come back and see how you did. Okay, so here I've copied the six-sided figure, or hexagon, and the two vectors. So it tells us to translate it along vector GH first. So I'm going to move it, I'm going to group it first. Okay, this this group and I'm going to move it down to right there okay so that's the first move okay so now that I've moved it down the distance G H now it says to translate its image along vector J I so I'm going to move from J to I and now I'm over here so I've moved my two distances to there and I'm going to label appropriately like it asks us to. So B was here, so this is B prime. A was here, this is A prime. F is down here. F prime, E prime, D prime, C prime. Moving it over here, this will be A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, D double prime, 
e double prime f double prime. So there it is. We moved it down, and then we moved it up and to the right, and we ended up right here. Okay, number four. It asks us to translate circle A and ellipse E along vector AB and label the image appropriately. So do that. Okay, so now that I've copied all of these, it now says to translate circle A and ellipse E along vector AB. Label the images appropriately. So I'm going to move A to where B is. And that moved everything in the direction of vector AB and the distance, the length of AB. So now I have circle A. I'm going to call that A prime. And rather than writing the word ellipse, I'll just say E prime. Okay, B says translate circle A prime and ellipse E prime along vector CD. So now I'm going to copy those. Okay, so now that I've copied those again, now I am going to, this should be here, now I'm going to move circle A prime, circle E prime, because it says translate A prime and E prime along vector C, D. So now if I do this, now this is where I am. Now I just have to scroll up so you can see this. And now I have circle A double prime, and this will be um, ellipse E double prime. Okay, so I labeled them appropriately. Now C says, did the size or shape of either figure change after performing the sequence or translations? Explain. So I would say no, comma, translations, preserve. size and shape, length, angle measures, radius, radii in this case, and so forth. Okay? So let me convert this into text. Okay. So translations preserve sizes and shapes. That should be sizes and shapes or just size. So. Okay, next problem. It says, the picture below shows a translation circle A along vector CD. So here's A, here's its image A prime. Name the vector that maps the image circle back to its original position. So what they're saying is, is this circle here got shifted down here. What translation would get A prime back to A? Well, I'd have to move D back to C. So the answer is D C vector. And the vector C D is what moved it down into the right. So going in the opposite direction, starting at D and going towards C will be the undo of this translation. Number six says, if a vector, if a figure is translated along vector QR, what translation takes the figure back to its original location? Now it's the same as this here without a diagram to go with it. But if we're going to go from Q to R to get back from R to Q, we're going to have to do the opposite direction vector RQ to get R back to Q. Okay, that is the end of lesson seven. Read the lesson summary and go do your problem set.